Ah, the Sega Master System, a third gen console released by Sega in 1986. It boasted both cartridge and Sega cards, which were like credit cards but for gaming. Sega hoped to take down Nintendo's NES with the Master System and while it had some good technical superiority, it just couldn't quite outdo Nintendo's stranglehold on the market in both Japan and North America. But hey, at least it tried, right? Number 10. Alex Kidd in Shinobi World You start the game with three lives and an energy bar with three units. You'll lose a unit if an enemy touches you. Lose all three and you'll lose a life. Lose all three lives and it's game over. But fear not my friends, as you can collect hearts by breaking treasure chests to earn additional energy units. With a maximum of six. Collect enough hearts and you'll earn a mini Alex giving you an extra life. This is a great game. You've got this. Ah oh, yes, Chase HQ. Chase down the criminals, ram them off the road. It's outrun, but with more high speed chases and car crashes. <laughs> Some people are probably thinking, how the hell has this made it into the top 10? They describe it as decent, but not great. But for me, I love it. The game's visuals are not as impressive as I remember compared to other games of the time, but the graphics are still decent, and considering the limitations of the hardware, it's still flipping exhilarating. Ah, Bubble Bobble, one of my favourite games of all time, now that takes me back. It's a tale as old as time as well, two humans, Bub and Bob, stroll into a mysterious cave and next thing you know, they've transformed into dinosaurs, as you do. And if they ever want to go back to their boring old human forms, they've got to make it to the end of the cave. Simple, right? Wrong. The two player mode is where the real fun is at, with one player controlling Bub and the other controlling Bob. Bubble Bobble is a classic that'll make you feel like a kid again. Get ready for a wild ride through a futuristic wasteland as you race to save a city from destruction. Fire and Forget 2 will have you on the edge of your seat as you blast your way through level after level of intense action. And let's not forget about the obstacles. You'll need to dodge and weave through dangerous terrain, avoiding obstacles and jumping over chasms to stay alive. But don't worry, you'll have power-ups to help you along the way, from missiles to shields. These power-ups will keep you in the fight and give you an edge against your enemies. Ninja Gaiden for the Master System isn't just some lazy port of a NES game. Oh no, it's a whole new experience. You play as the legendary Dragon Ninja, Ryo Hayabusa, who comes back to his village only to find it in ruins and his people brutally murdered. But that's just the beginning of the story because Ryo discovers that the sacred scroll of Bushido has been stolen and in the wrong hands it could lead to world domination. So he sets out to recapture the scroll and seeks out revenge for those responsible. Operation Wolf is a trigger happy game that puts you in the role of a heroic soldier tasked with rescuing prisoners from the enemy's stronghold. As you progress through a series of missions, you'll face off against a variety of foes, from standard soldiers to nimble ninjas, all while dodging their hail of bullets and grenades. But beware, the enemies won't go without a fight. Some will be shooting at you, others will be throwing knives and grenades, some are even armoured and require multiple hits. Ah, uh, this is a lovely game, Fantasy Star. You play as Alice, a young girl on a mission to avenge her brother's death and save the world from the evil Lassic. It's a real classic RPG with turn-based combat, but what sets it apart are the first-person sections where you explore environments in pseudo 3D. You get to navigate through caves, dungeons and towns to uncover clues and progress the story. It's a wonderful little game, and I also had it years later on the Sega Dreamcast. Psycho Fox is a classic platformer game with a fun and quirky twist. Players have the option to play as different characters, 
each with their own unique strengths and weaknesses, and must navigate through a variety of obstacles and enemies in order to progress through the game's later levels. Collecting items like eggs and white bags can provide help for power-ups and bonuses, while discovering secret areas can lead to even more rewards. The game's final boss battles and ending add an extra layer of challenge and a satisfaction to the entire experience. Alright, here we go then. This bloody amazing Sega game kept me up way past my bedtime for more than a few sodding nights when I first got my grubby mitts on it. The combo of adventuring, shooting and platforming is what makes this an absolute belter, one of the best games of its type available on any console. And let me sum up the graphics. I carumba! Uh, number one, not only the legendary R-Type, but the legendary arcade port of R-Type on the Sega Master System. Now I personally thought the Bob Pape conversion to the ZX Spectrum was something else, but this was a proper eye shag, and the soundtrack and the sound effects were a right belter. So no surprise, it really took the biscuit. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment, don't forget to like, and it would be really great if you could subscribe, as the dream is now 5,000 subscribers. Bye!